Hey, everybody. This is a short sample of this week's extra Patreon bonus, a dive into the history of mental health. Uh, this is just something about the multi-axial diagnosis, which was a tool that was implemented for a time in psychotherapy. In fact, if you're old like me, you might have used it as a therapist. If you're interested in listening to the weekly bonus materials, which are these little dives into mental health and uh, cultural history, then go to patreon.com slash brokenbrain or dwighthurst.com slash support to sign up for our Patreon. You also will know that your donation is uh, 50% of it for the first six months is going to go to our highlighted charity of choice, which for the month of June is Out Nebraska. OutNebraska.org will take you to the website for this uh, important and cool organization. They are a local charity that helps uh, uh, the LGBTQA plus population of Nebraska through education, community outreach, and legislation to make Nebraska a safer, healthier, and happier place for those individuals. So check them out. Check out local uh, queer-friendly and supportive advocates in your community as well. Give directly to them at their website, outnebraska.org, uh, and or join the Patreon and know that uh, the, the, you will get the bonus materials and part of your donation will, will go there as well on a monthly basis. The Broken Brain. Welcome, everyone, to Thursday's This Story. And this week, the story is the history of multi-axial diagnoses. I was recording with someone the other day, and I used the phrase axis 2 to refer to issues of uh, personality disordered kind of uh, symptoms. And it made me realize how old I am and how long I've been in this field. We don't use multi-axial diagnostic terms anymore nowadays, and we we used to. Uh, if you don't know what that is, well, that's what I'm talking about today. It used to be that when you wrote up a clinical diagnosis of someone, you would have five axes that you would always include at the end. It was essentially what was the diagnostic information, you know, axis one through V. There were Roman numerals. And each section was reporting on a different thing. So it was a way to sort of set up a requirement to report on certain areas and to stay focused. Now, this eventually changed. And the emphasis now is on making clinical statements. So the thing that we used to list on these axes is meant to be included in a summary conclusion statement. Uh, interestingly enough, it essentially dropped the axes and, then, and, and beefed up the need to be more specific in your conclusion statement and include diagnoses. The use of multi-axial diagnoses as an inclusion in clinical writing and clinical reporting from what I can tell, it seems to date back to the 1970s, but it was officially included in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual in version 3 in 1980. So the DSM-3 in 1980 had this included. 